All right, so in this example, we're gonna ask what is limiting reactant and theoretical yield of ammonia um, for uh, if uh, 4.56 grams of hydrogen and 1.25 grams of nitrogen react. Now, of course, uh, we're gonna need a chemical equation for this. So first, let's write out that. All right, so hydrogen is a diatomic element, so that's, of course, gonna be H2 gas reacting with nitrogen, N2, to produce ammonia, NH3. All right, and so let's uh, balance this chemical equation. So I've got two hydrogens on the left, three on the right. Uh, so the least common denominator would be six. So let's multiply the, that uh, hydrogen by three, ammonia by two. So that gives me six hydrogens on each side. And then I think that bounces the nitrogen. I got two on the left side, and now that coefficient of two on the right gives me two nitrogens. So here's the uh, balanced chemical equation for producing ammonia from hydrogen and nitrogen. All right, let's figure out how much nitrogen, how much uh, nitrogen we can make from each of my reactants. Okay. All right. So essentially, I'm going to do the same stoichiometric calculation. Um, I'm going to do a um, uh, mass to mass, or um, in this case, it's not really asking um, for um, grams, just asking for the theoretical yield, um, which could be in moles, nothing saying um, that is, uh, it couldn't be, but I do want to get it eventually go you know, to grams in this case, or work on an example going to grams. So let's pretend this question I uh, really said in grams. Okay, so I'm going to go mass to mass from both reactants to ammonia. Okay, uh, so hydrogen's listed first, so let's go after that one first. No reason we couldn't do nitrogen first, but uh, let's see, 4.56 grams of hydrogen. All right, um, and before I start off all my conversion vectors, or actually, um, I know that I'm gonna wanna go to grams of ammonia, because now my edited problem says in grams. Uh, so I'm going to go all the way to grams. So I'm going to do a mass to mass conversion, grams of hydrogen to grams of ammonia. And the game plan for both of these reactions is just going to start out with grams of my reactant. Okay, so I'm going to go from grams of my reactant to moles of the reactant. Why do I need to go to moles? Because, of course, the balanced chemical equation is going to give me my molar relationship. So then I'm going to go to moles of my product using those coefficients, and then I can go to grams of my product using the molar mass, okay? Um, so, what is the uh, molar mass of hydrogen? Well, uh, molar mass of H is 1.008, and there's two of them, and so one mole of hydrogen, that would be 2.016 grams, all right? Now I'm gonna to go to, so I go to my moles of reactant. I'm gonna to go to moles of product. How do I do that? Using the balanced chemical equation. In this case, it's two moles of ammonia are produced for every three moles of hydrogen. So three moles of hydrogen go on the bottom. So the moles of hydrogen cancel out. Grams of hydrogen already did. Two moles of ammonia on top. All right. And then, to go from moles of product to grams of product, I need the molar mass of nitrogen, and nitrogen's 14.01, and then three hydrogens, let me throw this into my calculator. All right, so we got uh, 14.01 plus three times 1.008. That's gonna give me 17, so one mole of ammonia on the bottom, 17.03 grams on top. Moles of ammonia cancel out. So to figure out how many grams of ammonia I produce, I'm just gonna take 4.56 divided by 2.016 times two divided by three times 17.03. And that's going to give me 25.7 grams with three sig figs. Okay. 
So uh, that was a lot of work, but I'm not quite done. I got to do the same thing for my other reactant. I got to do it for nitrogen. Okay, so I'm going to follow the same process. I'm going to go from grams of react reactant, in this case nitrogen, to moles of nitrogen, to moles of ammonia, and then finally to grams of nitrogen. So grams of nitrogen is going to be the units for my final answer again. But this time I'm going to start off with my 1.25 grams of nitrogen. Grams to moles, so in one mole of nitrogen, that's going to be 28.02 grams of nitrogen. Now to go from my moles of reactant to moles of products, I need the equation again and the coefficients from it. This time it's for every one mole of nitrogen, I'm going to make two moles of uh, ammonia. So for every one mole of nitrogen, I'm going to make two moles of ammonia. All right, so now I need to go to grams, and of course I'm just going to use the same molar mass that I just calculated uh, up there. So one mole of ammonia still has 17.03 grams. So my moles of ammonia canceled out, my moles of nitrogen canceled out, my grams of nitrogen canceled out. And so now I can figure out how many grams of ammonia I can make from nitrogen. So I'm going to take 1.25 divided by 28.02 times 2 times 17.03 and I get 1.52 1.52 all right so what is this thing I did my two calculations and I can either make 25.7 grams of ammonia or I can make 1.52 grams of ammonia now, uh, remember that theoretical yield is always the least amount. And so my theoretical yield is 1.52 grams. Once I make uh, 1.52 grams of ammonia, I'm going to run out of nitrogen. So guess what? That means nitrogen is my limiting reactant. And so that's how we calculate the theoretical yield with multiple reactants. Now, of course, if there's three molecule, three reactants, we do this a third time for the third uh, reactant. But essentially, it's going to be the same calculation once again, going from the amount of reactant to mass to moles, moles of the reactant to moles of the product. And finally, if we want to figure out the mass, um, we can go to grams. So mass to mass conversion factor for each reactant. The theoretical yield is always going to be the lowest number. And the, that always uh, leads back to what your limiting reactant is.